it means we want to get just y all by itself. If you look here, we have a bunch of x's and we have a bunch of y's. So the first thing we want to do is combine those like terms, right? So what I'm going to do is actually I'm going to move my x's so that they're together. So I'm going to add 3x. Oh, no, that's unfortunate. Because of the yellow, that blue, I guess it's literally the most like black, right? Red. Oh, no, red works. And green. Um, okay. So then that goes away. And then we have 73y on that side and 3y. What's negative 3x plus 8x? Well, what's negative 3 plus 8? Not negative. Positive. Mm -hmm. Five x. Okay. As long as I know you, what to do, you went the other way. But then you should have added three, and then it would be negative eight plus three. Positive five. Okay. All right. So now get your y's together. So I'm going to move this three y over here. Yes. And then those y's go away. And then we have what? What's 73y minus 3y? Negative 3. Seventy y, yeah. Equals 5x. Yeah. Now what? I want to solve for y. So if I want to solve for this guy, what do I need to do? Divide by, oh, 70. Divide by 70. All right? Yes, Ethan, I hear you. Y equals, what is 5x over 70? What's 5 over 70? Yeah, you can give me the fraction. So y equals 1 over 14, and then just bring your x over, and there you go. Okay? Guys, this is actually algebra 1. It's just a multi-step. So it doesn't really matter if the x and y is equal to 5 over 14? Yeah. Mm -hmm. When it says equal to, like, x or y, you're just making it, you know, you're making it, when it says solve for y, you're making it equal to y, right? Okay, we try another one. Yeah. Okay, so um, call this one number two. All right, so how about this one? Let's solve for y. Okay, it means make it equal to y. Don't let it throw you off that there's a fraction, right? When you have a fraction you want to get rid of, you can multiply by the opposite. All right, let's try this. So let's look at this. If we're solving for y, well, what did you guys do first? Yeah, you got to move that 15x. But right now it's a negative 15x, so how do you move it? Good. Add 15x. All right, good. So then that gives me 1 half y equals 15x plus 3. Yes? Okay. So how do I get just the y all by itself? How do I get rid of that 1 half? Good. You're dividing it, right? But if you have a fraction there, that's kind of weird. But you know what? You guys have actually learned this. Reciprocal. Yeah. It's same time split when you have division with a fraction. Don't you agree? Mm -hmm. So you're really multiplying it by the flipped form, which is the reciprocal, right? So what is the flipped form of one half? What's the reciprocal? Two over one. It's two over one, which is two, right? So over here on this side, well, you have the 15x plus 3. Guys, all of that is connected together. So you want to put parentheses around that. 
and multiply that by 2. Okay? So then this goes away. Then you have y equals, well, over here then, I need to distribute. What's 15x times 2? Double 15. Yeah. So 30x, and what is 2 times 3? Yeah, 26. And there you go. You did it. All right, how many of you guys got that? You're a part of it? Okay. Yeah? All right. This is our version of easing our way back into math after a week of probably not doing any math, right? All right, so, um, yeah, it is. Good. So you guys learned PEMDAS, right, in Algebra 1? Ten dots is what you use when you don't have an equal sign. You go in that order to simplify expressions, basically what you're doing. Um, when you have equal sign, you use ten dots backwards. So it's like sad mess. You know, and that's what you use when you solve. Yeah. All right, uh, for this one, what is the solution to the following equation? I actually want to try this problem, okay? Um, because this is just a review of things that we did in unit six, right? So um, we have all of these fractions. These are rational, no rational, right? And there's an equal sign. This is an equation, right? So solving a rational equation. Let's review this. So whenever I have these fractions, remember, I always want to do fraction one, fraction two, and fraction three, yes? Yeah, good. The denominators are not the same right now, so you need to make sure that they're the same. We gotta find the LCD. Good. So tell me, what is in the denominator for fraction one? Two. What about for fraction two? And fraction three? Okay. Do you see any that are that appear more than once? So two. So those just write it one time. But remember, everything in the denominators has to come down, right? So what else needs to come down? The three. What is two times three? Six. So that tells me that each of these denominators wants to look like six. Okay? So wait. If the first fraction only has two, what does it need to become six? needs a 3. So I'm going to multiply the bottom by 3 and multiply the top by 3. And the top already has a 3y plus 4, so I'm going to put that in parentheses and then put the 3 in front. Yeah? Okay, so what is the second fraction? What is that one missing? 2. two. So again, this guy also needs parentheses and I'm going to put the 2 in front, right? What is the last fraction missing? Three. So multiply the bottom, you multiply the top. Yes? All right, so now remember when we have equations, you can just cross out the bottom and then everything on the top, well, that's your equation, right? So you have 3 times 3y plus 4 plus 2 times 2y minus 5 equals 31 times 3. Right? And then look, you can just solve it. What do you need to do with that 3 and the 2? Yeah, distribute. All right, so good. Do it. Distribute, and then let's see what we get. F, G, H, or J. All right, so if I distribute here, I should get 9Y plus 12, yes? Mm -hmm. Plus 4Y minus 10 equals 93. Yeah. So all this on the left, yeah, combine my terms. 
9y plus 4y, 12 minus 10. Yes? Okay. Yeah, good. Good. And then what do you get? So y equals 7, that means h is your answer. Great job. This is actually, it is an old SOL problem. So, I mean, that's pretty good if you felt confident about this. If you didn't, then we know which areas we need to kind of review a little bit more later on when we do the SOL review. All right, so let's get started. So today we're going to talk about inverses. All right? So inverses, well, you know what? Basically, guys, an inverse relation of a function, okay? If you say that something is an inverse of another function, right? What happens is it switches the x and the y of a function, all right? And I don't know if you remember from Algebra 1, but when they first started talking about functions, they may have talked about like a function machine, right? Where you put something into the machine, which is the equation, and that's your x. And then what you get out is after you plugged it into the equation. Do you remember that? Your x is always your input. And the y is always your output. So here, basically what happens is we switch them. All right. How do we know if something is a function or if something is an inverse? Well, we write it with the little to the negative one power, okay? So the inverse of f of x is f of negative one of x, okay? And if you have y, well, the inverse of y is just y to the negative one. You just put a little to the negative one, and that tells me, okay, that's the inverse, all right? That's it. This is just a little vocab for us, all right? Question? Okay, so let's look at numbers one and two. I know I don't have numbers here, but you should, right? You have numbers there? Okay. okay. So if I look at this, I have a table of x's and f of x's. Well, f of x is the same as saying y, right? So if I want the inverse, Right? The x and then the f of negative 1 of x. Right? I can just turn it into a full on box here. There we go. Okay? Well, I told you guys the inverse is switching your x and your y. Yes? So look at the first pair of coordinates here. 1, comma, 3. What happens if you switch up? Uh, 1, comma, 3. Oh, three comma one. Yeah, 3, comma, 1. Well, then there we go. 3, 1. You switch the x and the y, you just gave me the inverse of that point. So try the next one. What about 4, 6? 4. And 8, 6. Good. That's it. Right? What? So how about the next one? So the next one, they just give you three pairs of coordinates here, right? Three points. Well, they didn't write it in a table form, so that's okay. We can write the inverse, right? We'll write it in the same exact form. I have three parentheses here, right? Alright guys, if this is x and that's my y, well then what is the first pair with the inverse of that? 5, negative 4. Yeah, 5, negative 4. The sign and everything, they all go. Okay, don't do anything, don't do anything extra except just flipping them. Okay, don't do anything with the signs. Alright, it doesn't become opposite. All right, how about the second one? Uh, six, zero, 
Good. And the last one. Good. So everyone is super quiet, but are we, do we all get the same answers? We're all on the same page? All right. Okay, so then let's look at three and four. Here's the thing, guys. If we are finding the inverse of equations, okay, first of all, finding the inverse means we need to flip what? Or switch what? Uh, so switch X and Y. So that is the first thing we're going to do. Switch X and Y. Okay? If I get equations, this is what I'm going to do to find the inverse. Switch your X and Y. And then step two, solve for Y. Well, no, no, don't even take the number. Literally, just take the X and the Y and switch them. So right now it says y equals negative 2x plus 5, right? This y now becomes an x. That x now becomes a y. See? Nothing else changes. You literally just switch the x and the y. Okay? And then, like we did in our warm-up, let's solve this for y. Let's make it y equals. So what should I do first? Uh, opposite. Uh-huh, because it's already a plus 5, right? So then we have x minus 5 equals negative 2y. Okay. Now what, guys? No, no, you're trying to get y all by itself. Now you can move this negative 2. Since it's multiplying with the y, what do you have to do? Divide. divide. So you have to divide everything by negative 2, just in case you can simplify, all right? Okay. And this is just, you know, a little review of Algebra 1. So let's see what we have here. Negative x over 2 is the same as saying negative 1 half x. Right? What's a negative 5 divided by negative 2? What's a negative divided by negative? Positive, right? Positive 5 times. Equals y. But this is the inverse. So there was a y up there, so I can leave it as y, but I need to put a little to the negative 1. And there you go. I like to separate when I divide, but you know, since I couldn't really simplify there, you could leave it as x minus 5 over negative 2. And that's the same thing. All right? You could see it both ways. I'll take either one. It's just if you split it up, if any of those need to be simplified, it's just easier to see that way. Okay? All right, so let's look at 4. All right, let's switch our x and y. So I have x equals 3y minus 1 over 2 now, right? And then let's solve for y. Guys, what do I need to do first? Switch the x and y. No, we already did that. Right? Because it started with a y equals, now I made it x equals, right? Huh. I want to get to this guy all by itself. What do I need to do with this 2 down here on the bottom? Multiply. So let's multiply by 2. Whatever you do on one side, you do to the other side. So then that goes away. And then we have 2x equals 3y minus 1. Good. Add the 1. So I have 2x plus 1 equals 3y. 
We're almost there. We almost have the y equals all by itself. What do I need to do? Good. Divide by 3. And you know what I'm going to do is I'm going to separate it out in case I can simplify anything. Turns out I can't. But that's okay. So I have 2 thirds x plus 1 third equals y to the negative 1 power, right, for inverse. Or you could have 2x plus 1 over 3 equals the inverse. All right? So I'll take it both ways. Just make sure you give me the most simplified form. Yeah? Any questions so far? All right. How are you guys feeling about this? Is it easy? Is it okay? It's okay? All right. All right, so let's look at five. five. All right. So I have f of x equals 4x plus 3. Wait a minute. You know f of x is the same as saying y, right? Yeah. But if it confuses you to see it as f of x, just rewrite it as y. So this just includes an extra step of, well, let's just rewrite it as y. And then let's flip it. Switch, I guess. Switch your x and your y. Why do you guys understand what I mean? I say switch, I mean switch. No answer? You don't understand? Are you lost right now? You just want to say no? Solve for y. I think you guys can do this one on your own. All right, what do I do first? Okay, I switch. Uh huh. Uh, got the three. Mm hmm. So x minus three equals four y. Now what? Divide by four. Yeah, to everyone, right? So you could write it two ways, right? You can write this as 1 fourth x minus 3 fourths equals y. Huh? Yep, negative 1. But wait a minute, hold on. Actually, look up at your original problem. Wasn't it f of x? So I guess instead of putting y, I should technically say inverse of f of x, right? So f and then do the to the negative one with x. And there we go. All right? Listen, I'm not going to count it wrong if you just put y to the negative one. I realize you're saying that that's the inverse. But if you remember and you put that, you know, right one, even better. All right, so let's try the next one. Okay, so all of the problems that we've done so far are basically all algebra one type of problems. Okay? But you guys are in Algebra 2, and so we're going to try some Algebra 2 problems, all right? So if I look at this, y equals the sum of 2 plus x squared, all right? Well, then first things first, got to switch your x and your y. So now this becomes x equals y squared, yeah? All I did was switch the x and the y. Now we need to solve for y. But you cannot go breaking into those parentheses until you get rid of what's outside that parentheses, okay? You gotta get rid of the parentheses first before you go breaking in there. On the outside of the parentheses, what do you have? Yeah, the power, right? You have a power of two. How do you get rid of the power? You do have to do something weird to it. How you get, not subtract. How do you get rid of a power? Good. The power's up here. Remember the root, right? So 
get rid of the power by taking the root. And in this case, it would be the square root because it's square. Good. Thank you. So whatever you do to one side, you do to the other side. But let's see if anyone gets this too. Guys, when you draw the square root, good, plus or minus. Okay. Close enough. Plus or minus. All right. When you draw the square root, or fourth root, or sixth root, or an eighth root, remember the even number roots? They get a plus or minus. Okay? So then that and that, they go away. And then we have plus or minus square root of x equals, uh, I don't need to put those parentheses anymore, 2 plus y. Okay? Now, you want to get y all by itself. You have that 2 there. What do you need to do? Minus a 2. You know, remember what I told you about when you add or subtract a number and there's already a plus or minus on that side? Where does this go? Behind it or in front of it? Good. It has to go in front. Okay? So negative 2 plus or minus square root of x equals y. Good, and that's also y, and that's the inverse, so I'm going to put a 2 to the negative 1. Okay? Sabrina, was that okay? Yeah? Abner? Okay. All right? Questions? Okay, so let's go to the back. Uh, I know my numbers are weird. So this is 7 and 8, right? Fix that. I don't know what happens with my numbering. All right, so number seven. Okay, so I have an f of x again. Do you want to rewrite it as y? y equals x squared plus two. Okay. And then to find the inverse, we need to switch the x and the y, right? x equals y squared plus 2. Oh, the squares in front of it. Hmm? No, that's not. All you move are just those letters. All right, so now remember we're trying to solve for y. What do I need to move? 2. 2. Subtract that 2. So you have x minus 2 equals y squared. Okay. Now, how do I get rid of the square again? Good. Take the square root. And over here, guys, you have an x minus 2 already. That means you've got to take the square root of all of that. Can't break them apart are connected by a minus. But you drew the square root, so you have to put plus or minus. So then that square root and that square, they go away, and then we have plus or minus a square root of x minus 2 equals the inverse of f of x. And I just happen to look up at my original equation my original function, and it was f of x, so that's why I took the f of negative 1 of x. x to the negative 1, right? Okay. Questions about that? Okay, do you guys want to try number 8? Yeah? Get, get started on it. Alright, so for this, I'm going to rewrite it as y instead of the g of x. Did you guys do that? Then did you switch your x and your y? Right? Minus the 64. Yep. Absolutely. So x minus 64 equals y cubed. But wait a minute. Got to get rid of that power of 3 by taking the root 
of 3. So cube root. Right? So then the cube root and that cube, they go away, so you have just the y. Then you have cube root of x minus 64. Do you need a plus or minus with this odd number root? No. All right, and then it really wasn't a y, it was a g of x, right? So I'm going to just fix it up a little bit here. the next one? Okay, so let's look at number five. All right, is it the y? Okay, let's switch our x and our y. Yes? Now, I need to solve for this y, but it's all inside that square root, right? So you gotta get rid of the square root. You can't just go and add four right there, okay? How do you get rid of the square root? The opposite of the root. You gotta take it to the oh. x plus the power, right? Okay, so since it's a square root, I need to take it to the power of, and whatever you do to one side, you do to the other side square root and that square. So you have x squared equals y minus 4. Now what, guys? You're solving for y. You get the y all by itself. Add the 4, uh-huh. So now you have x squared plus 4 equals y, and that's the inverse, so I'm going to put a little to the negative 1 there. Okay? Alright, so let's look at number 6. It says h of x, but same as y, right? Okay. So I'm going to rewrite it with the y, but now I'm going to switch my x and my y. Yes? And then we can solve for y. What should I do here, guys? What's the first thing? Minus yeah, minus the five. Good. And that y, I got it all by itself, but it's inside the cube root. How do I get rid of that cube root? Is that a root of three? I have to take it to the three. power of three, right? So that means now power of three, and over here, power of three. Okay? And remember that x minus five, that was there first, and you can't separate them because you have an x, you have a five, and they're connected by a minus. So put parentheses around it, okay? So now we have x minus 5, the third power, equals just the y all by itself, but that y is really h of x, right? I'm going to say the inverse of h of x. We okay with that? All right. 
right, guys. Ready for the next one? Okay, so these graphs. I know you guys think graphs are so weird and, you know, that they're difficult. They're not, not for inverses, okay? Remember, inverses means you're switching your X and your Y, yes? So when you see points on a graph, say what that point is, switch your X and your Y, and that's your inverse point, right? So let's look at this first point right here, okay? What point is that? Negative 4, 0, right? So then what would the inverse be? 0, negative 4. That becomes 0, negative 4. Okay, so 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. We're right here now. Right? All right, now let's try this one. That one right there, okay? I'm just gonna go from the left to the right, one by one. So this guy is negative two, negative three. So what is the inverse to this guy? Yeah, so let's graph that one. Negative three, negative two, so we're right there. Okay, let's go to the next one. Just from the left to the right, just going from point to point. So then this one is two, negative one. Do you agree? And then the inverse for that point would be negative one, two, good. So negative one, up two, there we go. And then that last one is at, 3, 2, so the inverse is, good, 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, and here we go. You just want to make sure that the general shape is the same, because you see how your original kind of goes in like a curved U shape, right? If you look at your inverse, that also has a curved U shape, so you're good, okay? First period said, you have to connect the dots. No, you don't. The first one didn't have it connected, right? Don't make stuff up, right? I think they were just being silly, though. They're so silly, they were like, connect the dots. Can you serious right now? Like, we're not serious. That's what you do with the next one. Yeah. So, if you look at the next one, you have a line, right? If you have just a line or say a parabola or whatever, just go and get some nice, good points, okay? List them, find the inverse, and then graph it, all right? So with this one, if I were you, I would use that x-intercept right there. I would use that y-intercept. And you know, you can find some other good points, like you could find that point and that point, okay? So those points, let's see, starting from this one down here, negative 2, negative 4. Oh my goodness, that's so good. And what do we have? We have 0, negative 2. Then we have 2, 0. Then we have 4, 2. Right? So I'm going to put each of the inverses, right, to those points right next to it in red. So it becomes negative 4, negative 2, negative 2, 0. And you can do it one by one, or you can do it all at once. All right? just wanted to list all of them, and then I can just plot and graph, right? If I have negative 4, negative 2, negative 2, 0, 0, 2, 2, 4. There we go. Okay? Don't try to eyeball it. 
the inverse is actually being reflected across this line. Okay, and that's very hard to just kind of eyeball. Alright, so I don't want any guessing. Make sure you go get the inverse of each of those points. Alright? It's not hard. Alright, so I want you guys to try the line. And if you want to, you can try the parabola. You know, since it is a parabola, I'm going to give you a hint. Please make sure you get the vertex and make sure you get those x-intercepts. All right, then you'll be able to kind of see that torpedo shape of the parabola, that U shape. Okay? So try these two, and then we'll go uh, over our answers together. All right, so with this one, let's see, I would use this y-intercept and this x-intercept. Since it's 0, negative 3, that means it becomes negative 3, 0. Yes? And then 6, 0, which becomes 0, 6. Right? And then, uh, if I had a ruler, sorry about that. There we go. We pretend that's straight, right? And then this one, well, just make sure you get your vertex and the two intercepts, okay? Then you can see that U shape. Your vertex is at negative 2, negative 4. Well, then that becomes negative 4, negative 2. Right? You have negative 4, 0. That becomes 0, negative 4. There. And then you have 0, 0. So that becomes just 0, 0. No matter which way you flip that, it stays 0, 0, right? And so there's that U shape. And we can just kind of eyeball that U shape. See that? Isn't that cool? Isn't this pretty fun? Right? It's pretty easy. So, what I have now is, uh, I have a practice sheet, six problems, you guys should be able to finish it. If you finish it, um, let's put the answers up here, okay? Uh, and, um, yeah, just for the practice, and then when you're done with that, I'll give you guys the homework, you have homework A, right?